Hello, uh, this is John Noguera from Sigma Excel. Welcome to our webinar. The title of the webinar is What's New in Sigma Excel version 6.1? Um, I am the Chief Technology Officer at Sigma Excel, and so I'll be uh, covering the, uh, the contents of what's new. And with that, we'll uh, have a look at our agenda. It is a, um, a 6.1 6 release, so what we're looking at are <clears throat> just different uh, small improvements. Uh, version 7 will be the one that will have more major uh, functionality added, and that's uh, later this year. But one of the big things um, is the, the fact that Sigma Excel is now compatible with Excel 2010 64-bit. Excel 2010 by default installs to a 32-bit or as a 32-bit application. Uh, if you were to install it as a 64-bit application, then uh, you would need to, to use version 6.1 in order to uh, uh, run Sigma Excel. So we won't actually be demonstrating that um, because the way uh, Microsoft has it set up is that you can only run either the 32-bit uh, or the 64-bit, but you can't, uh, you can't actually have both on your system at the same time. And currently I'm running on the 32-bit version. Advantages of the 64-bit version, while it can handle uh, larger data sets, <clears throat> and so if you're dealing with very large data sets, then you might want to consider going to Excel 2010 64-bit. Uh, we updated the cause and effect matrix with a Pareto chart, and we'll see that in just a little bit. Uh, failure mode and effects analysis template has been updated. Um, gauge R&R templates have been updated. And again, we'll demonstrate those. One of the things that um, we've had requests for is that if you have uh, multiple control charts, the ability to add data to all control charts, not just uh, the particular control chart that you're working on. And I'll demonstrate that. And then finally, some enhancements in the process capability combination report for uh, non-normal data. Uh, so I'm going to begin. Uh, all of this, by the way, that I'm going to be demonstrating is actually uh, in the updated workbook. So you can, uh, you can go back to that at any time. So if you, uh, you look at the, um, the new workbook, version 6.1, essentially everything that I'm going to demonstrate um, comes straight out of the workbook, and uh, you'll be able to go back and refer to that. So it, what we have in the templates, uh, in the, the actual folder that I'm going to use, or the workbook uh, examples that I'm going to use, come from template and calculator examples. Template and calculator examples are um, uh, in the uh, Sigma Excel sample data folder. So if you just click on Start, and you go to Programs, and uh, Sigma Excel, and then you go to sample data, it's the uh, down here template and calculator examples. Uh, the reason I want to use this um, is just to save on time, just because this, we have some examples on the templates that have already been populated. Um, I see Steve Clapp is uh, actually on here, and I, I, I want to uh, just take a moment to thank him for uh, some of the um, suggestions that you're seeing here. Uh, actually uh, did come from him. So thanks, Steve. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. So this is the the XY matrix. Uh, by the way, I am assuming that uh, you folks that are on here already are, are familiar with the tools, and really all you want is just you know a quick overview of what's new, and that's really my intent. I'm not going to teach um, how the various tools work, uh, but I just really want to show you um, you know the what's new part of it. If, if anything I cover you're not familiar with, and that may well be the case when we get to some of the more advanced areas like the non-normal, um, I just encourage you to uh, go back through the workbook um, on that material. So the, this is a, a, a helpful prioritization tool where you have your X's or your input process variables, and then you have your Y's, your um, critical, you know, the CTQs, 
um, or the uh, or the Y's output indicators, and um, you weight them, and then this simply um, it just multiplies the association score, which is typically zero one three nine, multiplied by the uh, the weight, and uh, and then so, so it's a weighted sum, giving you a weighted score. And one of the things this in this example we only have three items, which you know, it's not a lot, so it's, in this case, it's really obvious. Answer speed is the first thing that you want to um, focus your team uh, in terms of area of improvement. But uh, we've added the Pareto chart button, uh, so now when you click on the Pareto chart, there we go, so now you get um, your Pareto chart, and you can just, you get that visual of the, uh, the weighted score, okay? So that one's pretty straightforward. It, uh, it just takes the weighted scores um, on the y-axis and the uh, whatever you plug typed in uh, on the x's, and uh, and then that produces your Pareto chart. And by the way, as I mentioned, um, all of these templates under Sigma Excel templates and calculators uh, is how you access them. Um, but for expediency, I'm referencing. Um, the template and calculator examples. So basically, we just saved the worksheets um, in that uh, workbook and demonstrating that way. Here's the FMEA uh, inventory example. A couple of things here we have. Um, if you hover your cursor, um, say, on severity or on occurrence, again, I'll have to make my screen a little smaller here so we can see things better. Um, you get your uh, your RPN, your scores, your severity scores. So it's just, you have that down at the bottom. So if you scroll down, you get the information. But again, uh, people were saying, well, it would be nice to just be able to uh, uh, get that in as a comment. And, um, and so you just hover here on severity, and it gives you that list, occurrence, and detection. OK, so that's just a, a nice little um, addition making it easier to do your FMEA. And then the other thing we did, uh, we added more line items. Uh, you now have uh, 50. You can, of course, you can still expand that as well. But um, previously, we had, I think, uh, 30. And so this just allows you to, uh, means that you're less likely to have to uh, make changes on your, your FMEA worksheet. and. Uh, it, oh, we've added a row number. So what I can do now, if I click sort on RPN, so, um, but by clicking sort, it sorts all the rows um, in um, order of risk priority number, descending order. Um, we had thought about doing um, Pareto chart, but the problem with Pareto charting is in, in an FMEA, really, the whole row is important. It's not, you know, you don't have like a single cell describing what's going on. It's everything. It's the, um, you know, the, the failure mode, the potential effect, the, the cause and all that. And, and so a uh, Pareto chart on the um, FMEA really wasn't practical or not really viable to do because just because of the the amount of information that would be required. Essentially, we'd have to pull from every cell, and then you'd have, you know, really, um, your Pareto charts would just be too cumbersome. So at least you have this sort button, and then you can always just click back here, and it uh, sorts back uh, in the original order. Also, you can, uh, I don't have um, <clears throat> revised RPN, but if you have your actions and, your, and then your revised severities, so it revised the currents and revised detection. Um, then if you click on the sort, you will um, uh, you'll be able to sort on the revised risk priority number as well. Okay? When you click that sort button, it sorts um, the whole row. So all the information, you don't have to worry uh, about losing the, um, you know, we're not going to sort a portion of the row. It's the whole row is sorted. And then you just go back to the uh, original row number, and that brings it back to, um, uh, to the original uh, FMEA. OK, so that's uh, FMEA. Now, on the gauge R&R study, 
one of the things that we offer in Gage R and R are the templates, and um, and also a full um, analysis uh, Gage R and R analysis. Now, a lot of people like to use the templates uh, because they're easy to use and and uh, often you know and it's popular in class. You uh, if you're doing a Gage R and R and you have ten different parts or ten different units and three people. Uh, appraisers um, and and you record uh, the the readings uh, in in this you know filling out this template and then when you scroll down you um, you get your uh, your report in this case this is uh, not a good measurement system thirty three percent of the total variation is measurement error but um, if you want to analyze uh, the gauge R R traditionally. Uh, what we did was we added this button, create stack column format for analyzed gauge R and R. And when I click that, what it does is it reformats. Basically, it takes that worksheet and it creates a stack column format. And that stack column format uh, can then be analyzed. I just come into measurement systems analysis, analyze gauge R and R crossed, 